next up, let's take a peek at the media screen for the vehicle. Now, the 2022 Ram does have three available choices for the screen itself. It's going to either be the Uconnect 3 system with a 5-inch screen, which is just the basic screen. And then we have the Uconnect 5 option where there's two of them. So it's either an 8.4-inch or this 12-inch instead. And this thing looks absolutely beautiful. Like moving into our small metallic highlights along the side there, just into how the screen itself looks, I love it. Now, it does have a nice finish, but having said that, the top part here is going to attract fingerprints a tiny little bit. And you do have the option looking at screen protectors and things like that if you wanted to make sure that you're not getting this main screen a little bit dirty. But starting off with some of the basics, so the buttons along the left and the right hand side. So we do have dual zone climate control inside the vehicle, so we can easily adjust that out. You can see the different temperature readings are pretty straightforward. We've got a series of different modes there as well. So do we want it going to our windshield, face, feet, etc. And then we can also control our fan speed very simply on the actual side there. We've got our cabin auto mode, so let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be. Along the right hand side, we've got our front and rear defrosters, our air conditioning, air circulation, etc. Now this is our volume rocker. Alpine audio system sounds beautiful. We can turn that on or off as well too by simply pressing there. We also do have our base screen off button along the bottom right hand side. Same idea, button press in order to bring it back to life. We can easily tune this way if we want to, but you can turn this way if you really want to. You also do have the flexibility of point pressing the voice command prompt on the steering wheel to be able to tune to different radio stations, looking at playlists and a number of other things. Canceled. And then same idea, we can just easily cancel that out if we want to. Now this is going to be the home screen for the vehicle. If you're on one of the other options, let's just kind of go from home and we'll kind of work our way across the very bottom, along the top, etc. So first thing to point out along the very top, we do have our option of turning on our heated seats, heated steering wheel, and we can sync up. So if our passenger side was a different temperature, we could literally go in, we could sync it up, and then it defaults the passenger to whatever the driver's side is. We can easily adjust our whatever is going on with our temperature there. We can go up and down on these physical buttons there if we want to. We're going to button press there as well in order to be able to get into our media. So it's a hot button press to get into the media, just a slightly different way. We've got a tray along the very top there, so we just pull that down. We've got our backup camera temperature profiles and a number of other things. So backup cam, exactly that. It brings us into our backup camera where we can easily zoom into some different areas, zoom in, zoom out, etc. We can exit out of that. Pulling the screen down again, we've got our temperature and our profiles. So the profiles one is great because if you've got multiple people driving the vehicle, you can easily set up individual profiles for each person. So it'll remember your own personal settings, your phone, your media, so your presets and things like that. And you can easily change between active profiles there. You can edit individual profiles as well. So you can edit your avatar, you've got your pop-up message, you can delete the profile, and you've got a few other things. So different settings. So exactly what's going on for your individual theme. Moving back, we do have our notification center and we've got our Wi-Fi hotspot, so we do have the flexibility of easily turning this thing on. Now, one thing to note, so the vehicle itself is equipped with an onboard modem, but we do need a data-only plan through our cell phone provider in order to be able to have that done. So easy how to purchase there, which I think that's kind of actually pretty neat. So it literally tells you exactly how to set this thing up, which is incredible. Moving back, we've got our setup hotspot. So it's pretty straightforward to be able to do it, but like I said, you do need to have a data-only plan through your cell phone provider in order to be able to do that. Back down, we do have our Alexa there as well as our device manager. So we'll get to the device manager when we get into the phone. So we'll skip that one just for now. We can also edit this out as well if we want to be able to adjust our clock settings. We've got our outside temperature there. We've got our profile button along the very top. We can easily go through different profiles, etc. And then we've also got our Alexa button. So as of right now, we don't have an active internet connection. So we do need our 4G, so our data only plan through a provider to be able to do that. And then we also do have our passenger side seat so we can control the passenger temperature and that's going to be the basics of the top tray. Next up we also have our map so we can press this in order to be able to stretch the map across. Low fuel, I think that's kind of neat. So when you're in fuel, low fuel it literally is going to tell you, you know, do we want to find a gas station? Yes, no. And then it's going to let you know kind of where the closest stations are. We do have our easy pinch to zoom there. We can kind of do a drag there. We can go minus plus on this side as well if we wanted to go that route. So we've got a few options there. We can pull it down in order to recenter. We've got our 3D mode, we've got our north facing, and a few other options. We can have it go out so that it's completely muted, so as we go for different routes and things like that, we won't get any notifications. We're just gonna get alerts, or we'll get absolutely nothing. So you've got a few options there. And then bottom left-hand side, we've got a ton of options. So we could search technically right along the very top if we wanted to, so we can easily type in an address there if we want exit out. One of the nice things is that with that voice command prompt, we also have the option of doing navigation as well. So we can literally navigate home, work addresses, go to point of interest icons, and a number of other things. So we do have that flexibility. We can search using our voice. We can search physically that way. 
menu screen along the bottom, we can also search out there. So if we just start kind of randomly typing, so we're going to start typing and it's going to take a second. Let's give it a little bit more data to work with. But if you saw there, it literally gave us, yeah, all of the different options that were available within the geographic range and which one's closer, further away, etc. So we're just going to randomly select one of these guys and we can either drive or we can press the little three button there in order to add it to our favorite. We can use it as a starting point or we can search near here. So if we want to search for different options and things like that, we've got the flexibility to be able to do it. And we can also press the button along the very bottom there to go back into that screen. Same idea, button press to go back into this. So we're going to hit drive. And there we go. So we've got our main route, we've got a secondary and a third route. So we've got a few different route options that are available. You can see how much distance it's going to take and time it's going to take to get there. And then once you've got the route you want, you just hit drive. Super straightforward. We've got an indicator letting us know how far we are away from our destination. We hit our options there and a ton of options. So we can add in stops for parking, for gas, for food, and a number of other things. We can look at our full route overview if we want to. You will arrive at your destination at 1300 hours. Why, thank you. We can find alternative routes as well. So it goes back to that alternative screen, turn jumping left. back in. Then at the end of the road, turn left. We've got our turn by turn instructions. So literally can see exactly where we're turning. If we wanted to go that route instead, we can change our route type. We can report speed traps, which is so cool. Literally is like ways built into the screen. I love it. We've got our map view, routing options, and a few other options there as well. So our privacy, about, etc. So quite a few different options there. The sound and alerts end are interesting because it literally, we've got the flexibility of being able to show what sounds are actually going to show up there, so traffic jams ahead, etc. Moving out of our settings, we're back into this main screen again, and then we can just exit out of that if we want to to get back into our map. And we can also end route along the very bottom, so we can resume it or we can end route. So as you can see there, the route is now canceled and it literally is that simple using navigation in this thing. And then back into our home screen. So we do have the map there and then we also do have our radio. So we can literally stretch the radio across the top, which again jumps us into our media screen. Jumping back home, same idea. We go to our phone, brings us to the phone or back home, ET phone home. Now we could swipe this way and we can literally add in a number of different widgets. So if we wanted to add in different controls or seat wheel configurations and a number of other things, so you want your heated steering wheel, etc., we've got a series of different shortcuts. So rather than kind of go into the top there and in order to navigate through to our steer to our heated steering wheel it's just it's a small button at the top there so just by setting up individual widgets we can easily turn on our heated steering wheel and a number of things so i love the fact we've got so much flexibility and how the screen actually looks so great job on dodge's part to be able to do that we do have our phone there as well so we'll get into the phone when we actually jump into phone there so let's actually go into our media next so we'll go into our media along the very bottom and as you can see there are a ton of different options so along the top we've got our sources so our fm so actually looking, we've got our FM Series XM Bluetooth, radio, an aux cable, we have USB connections, Alexa, and things like that. Moving into Sirius XM does exactly that. So it jumps us into Sirius XM. We can look at our profile, look at artist radio. We can look at our favorites, all of our different listening history as well as our listener settings. So it's kind of neat because we can customize our profiles. So if you've got multiple people driving the truck, you can literally set up who is going to be able to listen to what. So I think it's kind of neat. We can block out explicit content, we can tune to start, or we can reset all of our history. Moving back, we were at a few different options and different settings there. So we've got our Sirius XM system settings. So we've got our radio ID and a few other things. Moving into our help and support. Moving back, we're on this main summary screen again. So we could search for a channel there as well. Moving back, we also do have our notifications. So if we want to have a certain, whenever a certain song or a certain artist comes on, we can manage that out from here. Simply pressing done and we're set to go. We can look at related channels. We can change between channels this way if we wanted to. Back to our sources. So we do have quite a few options available there. So jumping back to Sirius XM, we can also manually type in the station there. And that's the same whether we're looking at Sirius XM, AM, FM, things like that. We could literally just type in the station that way if we wanted to. So it's pretty straightforward. So we can tune that way to direct tune. We can tune this way, or we can use the voice command prompt on the steering wheel in order to be able to tune out that way instead. So ton of different ways to be able to tune out, which is definitely a nice thing. So we're going to save there. We do have the option for our phone. So as of right now, there's no Bluetooth connected devices there. So that's obviously not an option. And same idea, we have a USB connected device as an option. So if you had a USB stick with MP3s, that would show up as an available option there. We've got our now currently playing. So whatever is currently active and playing right now. So if we go to FM, as you can see, we can change between songs, stations, things like that, but just moving left versus right, etc. We've got our browse along the very top there as well. So we can literally see every station that's available based off of our geographic location. So if you're going to different areas, you're not sure what stations you can tune to, literally just scroll to our browse and we can see everything that's available. 
Then we can look at all of our presets. So whatever ones we have currently saved as a preset will literally show up there. So that's kind of neat because we can browse through all of our presets and then as we change, as we press the button on the steering wheel there, we can literally navigate between different presets. So we can also hold to save. So as of right now, we're tuned to the station. So that's literally how we change to whatever station and save it. So we go to a playing, we tune to whatever station we want to, we can actually save it along the very bottom. So if we wanted to, we change to that station. We literally just press and hold and it saves it in that way. So we can save the stations quite a few different ways if we want it to. And we can easily trash save stations as well that way. Along the very top, we've got our audio settings there. So I love the fact that we've got the option of selecting each individual volume. I think it's a really cool feature. So we can literally select each individual volume for each feature, which I think is amazing. So our phone ring, how high or low do we want that? Do we want media and max volume? <laughs> so loud, so loud, so amazing all at the same time. Audio settings, so we do have our surround sound there as well. We can easily turn that system on or off, just giving us more of an immersive experience there. Our audio settings, so we can easily adjust our treble mid-range bass. And looking at the screen, so the screen is fairly responsive there. And then we can literally change out our balance and fade simply by moving to the left versus the right-hand side there as well. Or we can literally just do a drag and drop wherever we'd like it. We've got our autoplay, so do we want to literally have it so as a USB is connected, it's automatically going to play for us. And then same idea, automatically turn on the radio, yes or no, and is it going to recall the last station? Because we aren't connected through auxiliary, we don't have that option along the bottom of the screen there either. But that's going to be the basics of the actual audio tab. As we move into the next one, which is going to be our comfort settings, we have more advanced climate control settings. So we do have all of our climate control settings along the outside of the screen, and we've got all of these built-in options. So we can literally just kind of drag and drop there in order to change between whatever's going on with our climate. We can have it going to our windshield, face, feet, any sort of combination of the two there as well, which is kind of nice. We can turn on our heated seats there as well as our heated steering wheel. So easily adjust that on off, max AC, etc. And then we can also just do a button press there there in order to be able to control the fan speed. So I think it is kind of neat that we've got so many options to be able to do that. So easily turn on our AC, as you can see, it turns that light on auto or our air circulation. And then we can also sync up both sides if we wanted to very easily that way. Into our navigation, we've already seen the screen and I do love the fact that it uses up the entire screen real estate. It's really, really nice and it's, like I said, it is fairly responsive. So just kind of doing a simple drag drop, pinch to zoom, etc., and then just back to an easy recenter. So it is nice and it is fairly responsive. And one of the cool things, I didn't actually mention this earlier, but as you can see there, and we've searched for an address, so we can literally go back into our previously saved destinations. We can also search by GPS coordinates and a number of other things. So if you had a, if you're going off roading and you know, somewhere where you just physically don't have an address, just plug in the GPS coordinates and you're set to go. And then we can exit out on the very top, moving into our phone along the bottom. So as of right now, no phones are currently connected to the vehicle and we can very easily set up a phone. So all we're going to do is just hit pair. On our phone, we're going to literally wait for, so we're looking for Uconnect and we've got those numbers there. So we're going to go Uconnect and we want to pair up. Yes. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync on this one? I'm just going to say no, so we're going to go don't allow. All right, and we're connected. So one of the great things about the Uconnect 5 media screen is that it does support wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So we can select OK or not now. We can hit not now, use CarPlay, etc. So we're just going to hit use CarPlay and hit OK. Follow instructions on our device, sure. We're just waiting there, and as you can see, it's working on connecting. There we go. So it's connected and it's launched in. And look at this. We've got Apple CarPlay along the entire screen using all of the area of real estate. So we can kind of move left, right, etc. We can go into ways, same idea with our factory navigation. It's just stretched out across the entire screen. We can save some things out and look at favorites. We can also turn on our microphone along the very bottom tray. We've got what's currently going on with our phone. Pressing this one brings us back into this main Apple CarPlay main screen. And it really is that simple looking at LiveX Live, so that's a radio app, so certain apps will work through this middle screen, but not every app will. Because if we look at my phone there, we've got tons of different apps that are on here, but not every app will work directly through this middle screen. So certain ones will, certain ones won't. Now, the, the, the apps that are gonna work through the screen typically will be their launch. You might have to update certain apps in order for them to work on the screen itself, and some apps won't work over Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc. So it's going to depend on what apps you have installed. Is your phone up to date? Is the app up to date? Things like that. Now, one of the cool things is that we do also have the flexibility of being able to customize the overall layout of the screen. So on our phone, if we go into our general settings, we go into CarPlay, we've got our Uconnect, 
and we can either forget it, we can turn CarPlay on or off if we want to, and we can customize. So if you have a tendency to ooh, maybe listen to your podcast a little bit more, as well as your audiobooks, we can do a drag and drop, and then it just automatically updates it for us. Now, if we're playing around, we've accidentally removed some things, everything we remove is saved to the bottom, so we can either do a pr press in order to be able to bring it back up, or we can just do a reset, and we can res reset our default layout in order to moving back in, bring it back to our factory default screen instead. So you do have quite a little bit of flexibility there, which I definitely think is a nice thing. Now along the very bottom tray, we can also press this button there in order to launch into the Uconnect phone. So if we wanted to go to our dial pad, things like that, we've got that flexibility. Because we're set up through Apple CarPlay right now, if we press and hold, as you can see there, I've got my Siri assistant there as well right now. So we could navigate, make phone calls and things like that using our voice this way. We can press along the bottom in order to launch into our device manager. So as you can see there, we've got active devices. We can have two active phones if we want to. We can add in another device. We can look at our do not disturb mode. Along the very top, we can connect to our phone, audio, and then back into CarPlay if we want to. So we can easily toggle that one on or off. So we toggle it back on. And as you can see, it's on there again. And we can just launch back into CarPlay by pressing the bottom. Moving back out into our device manager, we can also go to some settings along the side. So we can move it we connected into CarPlay, so let's go back home for a second into our device manager. There we go. So as you can see there, we can make it our favorite. We can enable the phone, enable Bluetooth, enable CarPlay as well. So we can enable disable. We can go a charge only mode, disconnect, or fully delete the device. I'm going to leave it connected just for a second there as well, so I can show you how we can set up an Android device, and we can kind of have it working the same basic way. Now, setting up Android Auto is literally the exact same process, so super straightforward. If we weren't on this main screen, it would show us the phone there. We can go into our base device manager there in order to be able to easily add in a device. Along the very bottom there, we can easily just add a device that way. So what's going to happen is it's going to disconnect my Apple CarPlay session, session which totally makes sense because I'm connecting to a new phone. So we're going to search for a new phone. And then very similar to what we saw there, we're just looking for our Uconnect, so we're just going to, uh, we're going to connect through. All right, same idea, pins match up, they do, so yes and okay, and the device is connected. So literally is that simple, same idea, do we want to allow contacts to messages and things like that? But one of the great things is that this thing also supports wireless Android Auto. So same idea, do we want to connect? Yes, let's connect it. So literally that simple, should take a few seconds there, and in five, four, three, two, and one. There we go. So we are connected, so Android Auto, we want to continue in order to be able to finish setting that thing up, and we're connected there. Now, one unfortunate thing, obviously the glaring issue is that it's not full screen like what we saw on the Apple CarPlay side of things. Now, as of right now, there actually isn't a way to be able to set that up for full screen on the Android Auto specific side. So if we go through, we do have a few other options, but unfortunately, full screen Android Auto is not an option inside of it. So I do wish that they would kind of stretch this across the entire screen like what we saw on the Apple side of things, but at least we do have Android Auto support inside of this vehicle. Now, I am fully updated on my phone there as well. It's the Samsung S9 Plus. So something to think about there that we don't have the same options that we would have on the Apple side of things, but it still is there. We do have quite a few options there. As you can see, we can see exactly what's going on with our connections. We've got podcast messages. We've got Google Maps. So if we hop back into Maps there, as you can see, we've got our Maps. We've got our traffic settings. So if we wanted to, we can, just, we can enable our traffic. We can look at our route options there as well. So we can avoid motorways. We can look at toll roads, avoiding ferries, and a number of other things. So we do have quite a little bit of flexibility as to what's actually showing up, which is nice. We can move back into our home screen, hot button press to get into our maps, hot button press to get into our podcast. We've got our notification center and then our Google Assistant there. And then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things. So if we press and hold the voice command prompt on the steering wheel for a second, it launches into our Google Assistant. So it is nice that we've got that flexibility. And like I said, it's super simple to be able to do it. And we can jump into our home screen there again, very simply. And then very similar to what we saw on the iPhone side of things, we could literally search for Android Auto on our phone to jump into our settings. And then we've got our currently connected vehicle. We can customize the launcher. So like we saw on the iPhone side of things, we can just kind of do a drag and drop in order to move between different options there. But one thing to note, any changes that we make here, we actually do have to close down Android Auto on both devices and relaunch it in order for those changes to take effect. It's not the same as the iPhone side of things where it was just, it was there, you kind of did a drag and drop and it just updated it on the fly. We still can update and customize and things like that. It's just not as simple as the iPhone side of things, but we still have that option. Moving back, we also do have our Google detection. So we could just say, hey, Google. 
and it turns on our Google Assistant. We've got our day night modes. We've got our refresh media, automatically start media, our Google Assistant. We can disable wireless app Android Auto as well if we wanted to. So we do have quite a few different options that are available there. Now, if we go into Android Auto along the very bottom, so we press that button, we can launch into our Uconnect phone or we can jump back into the device manager. So as you can see there, we're back into these main screens so we can enable the phone, Bluetooth, and enable Android Auto, etc. So we can literally select what mode we want to be in. So as you can see, we've got both phones connected with both active phones. We can add in more devices. We can go do not disturb. If we go into our main phone, we can make one of them favorites as well. So if you've got multiple phones that are connected, which one's going to take priority? So if you've got two people that are in here, both phones connected on the same profile, whose phone do you want connected first? So you've got a few options there. But deleting phones is super simple. Like we go there, we can delete the device. Yes, do we want to delete? It's gone. Really that simple, same idea of the Galaxy. If we want to, we can just simply delete the device. Do we want to delete? Yes, and the device is now fully disconnected. We jump back into phone, no device is connected. So it's removed it from Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, etc. And it literally is that simple to be able to do it. All right, now continuing through. So we were on our phone there, and as you can see, no phone currently connected, but if it was, we would have all of our options there. We can jump back into our device manager if we wanted to. Moving into our vehicle, this is where we have a boatload of available settings. So we're at the top page there. So let's kind of go line by line, et cetera, in order to figure out exactly what's going on. And we do have our off-road pages there and jumping inside, we've got our steering angle. So as you can see there, we can see what's going on with our transfer case. As of right now, I'm in, our t I'm in the two high mode, but if we flip out, so we're in our four high, so it's making that switch there. And there we go, so immediately updates. We've got our GPS coordinates along the very, and then we can easily just button press in order to switch between two high, four high, four low, et cetera. We've got our rear axle there as well. So do we want that axle locked, unlocked? Moving, ooh, actually, let's go vehicle dynamics again so we can see what's going on with our steering angle. So as we rotate the wheel, it lets us know what's going on with the angle, which is kind of neat. We've got our gauges. So even though they are on the middle cluster screen there, having everything laid out here, I think is a good option. So if you're going off-roading and you want to see exactly what's going on, you can look at your transmission, temperature, your oil pressure, and a number of other things. And then we've also got the vehicle pitch and roll. So we can see exactly what's going on with our vehicle kind of as we're going, which uh, same thing, if you're going off-roading, always useful to be able to have these features built in. Moving back to our vehicle settings there to jump into our controls. So we've got our mirror dimmer. So this thing does have an auto dimming rear view mirror, but one of the nice things is that we do also have the flexibility of being able to lock this thing out. So if you don't want the auto dimming, auto dimming rear view mirror turning on whatsoever, we've got the flexibility to literally be able to disable, enable it just by doing a simple button press. We do also have our rear view camera exiting it out there. We do have our settings as well. So settings, same idea, a ton of different options that are available there. So starting off with our display, we've got a series of different languages. So do we want Spanish, English, Italian, or French? Moving back, we've got different display modes. So either in auto mode or we can go into a manual mode where we can literally select the screen brightness there as well, or we can just let the vehicle determine how bright it should be. We've got a few other options so we can set some themes out. So as of right now, we're on theme three, changing it to our theme two. So it just changes around the basic dynamic of the theme itself and kind of gives it an interesting look at this. Oh, this is cool. I love blue. So just like having that look, yeah. This is where it's going to live, right? <laughs> this really, really nice look there. Moving back. Here we go. So as you can see, there are a few other options. So we've got our units. So do we want to go for our speed, kilometers, miles, distance? How do we want to have these things measured out? And then same idea with our current consumption. So it is nice that we've got so many options there. And let's change out. So we've got Celsius, Fahrenheit, etc. Moving back, same idea, a ton of other options that are available there. So we've got our touchscreen beep, so we can turn this thing on or off. The theme mode, auto mode means that the vehicle is going to determine if it's in our daytime or our nighttime mode, just depending on how bright it is outside. So we can permanently lock out either mode if we wanted to, or we can just go the auto mode and the vehicle is going to flip us between one mode or the other as necessary. We do have our, our main category. Now touchscreen beep, because I've got the volume down, we can't hear anything. We've got our fuel saver mode in the cluster screen. Do we want to navigate turn by turn in the cluster? So if we've got a route going, it's going to show up inside of our middle screen. And then we've also got our phone pop-up being displayed in that middle cluster screen. We've got profiles. So for our individual profiles, how do we want it set up? And that's kind of neat because if we've got a different profile, so we move back to our profile settings there. If you have individual profiles set up, you literally have the flexibility of being able to select what language is in your individual profile. And same idea, how do we want to have these modes and all of these different things set up for your individual profile? So if you kind of like settings the way things are, you're sharing vehicles between multiple people, you can set it up however you'd like it. We've got our safety and driving assistance settings. So our auto and emergency braking is amazing. So one of the great things is that if the vehicle senses a potential collision, it may actively brake for us or it can give us a warning or we can turn the system off. 
our forward collision safety. Same idea, do we want notifications of whether that happens, yes or no, and how likely is it going to happen? So is it going to happen far in advance, medium, or near you? Moving back, we've also got our front parking sensing volume. Do we want it high, medium, low? And same idea for our reverse one. Our rear brake assist is amazing. So as you go to back up, if the vehicle senses that there's something in behind you there, so if we throw ourselves into reverse, so as you can see, there is something that's right in behind us there. So if we were backing up, it would slam on the brakes for us to help us avoid a collision. Hill start assist, as well as our tire fill assist. We've got our clock so we can sync it up with GPS. We can set the time manually. We can flip into our 12 or 24 hour mode if you'd prefer that military time instead. We can show this, the time in the status bar and we can set the date out ourselves. And we can also turn show the date and time when the screen's off. So if we go screen off, we've got our date and time. So it is kind of nice that we've got that option. So we turn that back on or off, etc. So we can literally customize how that looks. Phone and Bluetooth back into our device manager, which looks a little familiar. We've got our do not disturb. We can enable active phones and a number of things. So the recurring theme here is that Ram has made it very simple to get to all of these different options a number of ways. So rather than kind of digging through each individual option, you can literally find it in a number of different ways if you really wanted to. We do have our voice options. So do we want to have a male versus a female voice? Do we want to have it listen for a wake up word? So if we say, hey, you connect. There we go. So it turns on our voice command prompt Canceled. there. So instead of having to press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, if we're just going to be using the Uconnect setting, we have the flexibility of have it listen to a word there. We've got our barge in as well as our command list. So the command list is this list here. So we can kind of select through and figure out what we can do for each individual setting as well. Canceled. So we've got the flexibility to change out whether or not that's showing up. Navigation, same idea, a ton of different options. So do we want to show our traffic flow, our arrival times, destinations, etc.? Sidebar, do we want to have different options available there? Do we want to have it auto hide, which is kind of a neat one, or do we want it always visible? So we have quite a few different options that are available there. Moving back and back again. So we do have our map view. Do we want to have our auto map zoom? So as we get closer to a road types or no auto zoom, etc. And how do we want the map orientation to be as a default there? And then we've got some routing options. So do we want the fastest, shortest, or the most eco-friendly route? Do we want to avoid certain things? So things like toll roads, carpool lanes, interstates, etc. So quite a few options. Do we want to send our destination to our phone? So if you were connected through the Uconnect Media app, you can literally send your destination to your phone, which is kind of neat. Moving back, we've got some sounds and alerts. So do we want to have everything read out loud as well? So for our early time, for our arrival time, street names, and things like that. Same idea for some cameras, we can turn those things on or off, etc. for our sounds, for our alerts. Do we want to have an alert when we're speeding? Yes, no, matter of preference. We've got our traffic jam there, our reachable range, low emissions warning, and a number of other options there. Moving back and down, so we also do, oh, did I go through? Oh, neat, okay, cool. Moving into our camera there, so we've got our backup delay, which is an interesting one. So if we're in reverse, if we've got this one on, and we're in reverse, we go to drive, as you can see there, it keeps our backup camera on there. So it's essentially just a delay for the camera itself. And then we've got our backup camera, so our fixed guidelines. So as we're in reverse, so we've got our guidelines there. I know, I know, I'm not going to back up into the car there. So we've got the guidelines, whether those show up or not. And then we've also got our active guidelines. We've got our mirrors and wipers. So we've got our rain sensing wipers and then our headlights with our wipers. Lights, do we want to have our headlight delay? Yes or no? So when we go to lock the vehicle, does our, do our lights stay on? So we've got a few different options available there. Our illumination on approach. So the side view mirrors actually do have lights on the outside there. So do we want to have those lights come on? Yes, no. Headlights with our wipers or flash our lights when we lock. So when we go to lock the vehicle, do we want our lights flashing there to let us know? We've got our auto park brake. So as we go to turn the vehicle off, it's automatically going to turn on the parking brake for us. And then we've got our brake servicing there doors and locks. So we've got our auto door lock, which is kind of a neat one. So what's going to happen is as we start driving away, it's going to automatically lock the doors, auto unlock on exit there as well. So as we go to turn the car off, it's automatically going to unlock the doors. We can also sound the horn when we go to lock. So as we go to single button press, it's going to give us a beep or we can do it on our second press. As we go to remote start through the fob, do we want to have a sound come on? Yes or no? When we go to unlock the vehicle, when we press it the first time, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's door? And then we've got our passive entry there as well, which means that we don't need to actually physically unlock the door from the key fob. Seats and comfort. So when we go to remote start the vehicle, what's going to happen there? Do we want to have it auto comfort, which means that the vehicle is going to determine what's going on with our seats. So we do have our key off power delay as well as our headlight off delay there. 
We've got some advanced audio settings, which we've already seen all of these options, so controlling all of our individual system volumes, surround sound, and a number of other things. Moving back in, we've got some notification settings. So we, as we miss calls, we get text messages and things like that. Do we want those notifications, yes or no? Sirius XM setup, we can block content, or we can jump back into these settings, which same idea, we saw that when we jumped into media. We've got some software updates. Software updates over Wi-Fi, definitely useful. And one of the reasons, yeah, there we go. So it wants us to connect to our Wi-Fi network. So definitely useful there. And the big reason why is because if the vehicle senses there's an update available, it's automatically gonna download it for us. We've got our system information, so we can see which version of the system we're on, as well as our base licensing. And then we've got our reset option, so we can reset so many different options. We can restore everything to our factory defaults if we want to under our factory reset. We can reset our performance values and a number of other options. So it is nice to know that we've got so much flexibility as to what's actually showing up and how we can reset these things. So if the radio is given any issue, you can restart it. You're selling your vehicle, you can reset everything. You can reset certain things if certain options are giving you any sort of a hassle or any sort of trouble. We also do have, so our apps along the very bottom there, so just kind of did a couple button press there, so back to the main screen, and here we are. So we've got our favorites there, which these ones were our currently favorited ones. I'll show you how we can favorite and unfavorite and things like that in a sec. Actually, I just removed it, so that's how you do it. That's how you unfavorite one, is literally just button press in order to be able to get rid of it. We can look at our recents as well, so which ones were we recently in. We've got our category view. So we've got a few different options there, so our device manager, etc. So everything with a blue star is going to be a favorite. So if you want to have your audio settings set, set up as a favorite, you can do that. Moving into our comfort, same idea. Do we want to have our comfort settings there, our driver, passenger, heat, etc. Navigation, our phone, or we can just go to all and literally have everything listed that way instead. So it is kind of nice to know that, you know, some of these different options, like our backup camera, our passenger driver heated seats, our different tutorials, et cetera, are all based off of this main screen. So we can literally save some things. So let's say if we turned on our settings there, Sirius XM, et cetera, under our favorites. Oh, I pressed Sirius XM. Oh, I pressed it. Oh. We go into our favorites though, and all of those ones that I start are now saved. I start unstarring them and they get rid of them. So when, that's kind of a neat thing because if we're going through certain base settings, so we go through our media, if we want to go to our different settings and things like that, we could technically do it fairly easily looking at our audio settings there, but we can also just go apps, audio settings, and that's going to launch us right into our audio settings there as well. So we do have quite a few different options there, and I love the fact that it's all laid out so nicely. But that's going to be the basics of the Uconnect 5 media screen for the 2022 Dodge Ram. So that was pretty cool, right? I love the overall look, the aesthetic of this thing, what type of features it offers as well. But if you have any questions though, you ran into any problems yourself, drop down below and let me know. I'm more than willing to talk you through any issues that you might be having. If you enjoyed the video though, thumbs up and share it with your social networks. Definitely subscribe because it helps the channel grow. Until I see you next time, take care.